And Via Vincencio. Martin Dragons, a Tark Red. Look at that beard. Now that's that's a healthy beard. Zamora and Birkenbile are competing for best beard in the top eight fiercely. That's tough. That's tough. If you guys take a look at our player profiles, you let us know who's got the better beard out there. Use that hashtag SCGDFW. I think it's pretty close as we are underway here. Nomad Outpost will start things off here for our quarterfinals, not semifinals. Zamora will draw his card. Right. So looking at the mayors, talking about the kind of the spell density. Only 14 removal spells in Mardu Dragons. Two of them are thought seeds. Those don't really count. So what he's banking on is four Crackling Doom, four Draconic Roar. And actually this one, though not normally good against Tatarka Red, four foul, two Foul Tongue Invocation. It might hit a Goblin Token, which is not good, but it does gain four life. So it's got it's got some upside. Any four life's okay. Now for Zamora, the goal, as usual with Tatarka Red, get on the board early. You see him sacrifice the Wooded Foothills. He's down to 19. He's got a mountain. He's got a Swiss Spear. He's into the red zone, attacking for one. It's a good start. Great. Love it. And I especially like it because the cards, like I was saying, that matter in Via Vicencio's deck, game one, are the Soulfire Grandmaster and Seeker of the Way. Those are what he's going to have to use to survive the early game, and those cards do not match up well against Monastery Swift Spear. They do not at all. Looks like there's a two-mana spell coming. It is Seeker of the Way. The goal for Zamora is to get this thing off of the table as he'll untap and take a draw step here. You see Stoke the Flames in hand. Looks like he may have picked up another copy of Swift Spear. He even has a second land. There's a Swift Spear. I think we've got a Wild Slash, and we do. This is a great start. Great start. Wild Slash, you said, it's great against those two drops. And I mean, the double Swift Spear style starts, those are among Atarka Red's best openings. They are. Trust me, I know. For First hand, as Via Vincenzo will draw cards, the Temple of Triumph. That third land does not enter the battlefield untapped. He'll scry. A little behind the eight ball right now. I mean, I know I'm playing against a Tarka Red. It's these kind of draws where I just sit there and I hope, and I say, I really hope you aren't, don't have a Tarka's commander in your hand. I'm not sure how I would beat that. Soulfire Grandmaster in a passing of the turn. Zamora's going to draw a card. He's got a mountain. He also has a copy of Manic Influence. Goblin Rabble Master. Looks like I stoked the flames too. Yeah, multiple stoke the flames here. Yeah, Rabble Master. Unfortunately, that Goblin will make an ill-advised attack, but it won't at all. We're going to convoke a Stoke the Flames to all four creatures. Yeah, it's not a bad turn. You know, you'd like to be able to kill that creature and get in some damage, but no damage able to get in, but, but Soulfire Grandmaster is off of the table. Rabble Master is on the table, so you have to be pretty happy with some more. The board is clear. You don't have to worry about a card like Anger of the Gods, Drown and Sorrow. None of that nonsense is going to come into play. Not game one. Yeah, not game one. That's correct. So The coast is very, very clear game one. Yeah, and that's one of the things that... Remember, they have de the each other's deck lists in the top eight. Nathan can play with confidence right now that he's not going to get hit by any sort of anger of the gods. And that confidence is really important. Well, when you're playing a red deck and you can just drop everything on the table, it is a very, very nice feeling as Michael's going to sacrifice his Bloodstained Mire, going to take one and search up either a mountain or a swamp here. Yeah, and one of the things I like game one here is because Via Vicencio doesn't have a sweeper, his ability to stabilize is is not very strong here. He doesn't have a card like Butcher of the Horde with like a Flying Life Linker or anything like that. His finishers are Storm Breath Dragon and Thunderbreak Regent. And even if he gets one of them, they don't match up well to what Nathan has. There's a Thunderbreak Regent. Pass that turn back over to Zamora. Zamora's gonna untap and draw pretty quickly here. He does have another copy of Stoke the Flames in hand. You see the Manic Influence. No Atarka's Command just yet. I think that third card is another copy of Goblin Rabble Master. He's got that split two in the main, two in the board. Another Rabble Master, great here as well. Can play it, convoke, kill Regent, swing for a lot of damage. Yes. Well, he's going to take his time, take a look at the board, make sure he doesn't make a mistake here. He'll take one. Looks like he'll just cast the Stoke. That'll trigger prowess on each one of the Monastery Swift Spears. Some more will have to take three, of course, from the Thunderbreak region trigger, but that's okay because the board is clear, and that means he gets to attack for a lot of damage. Two, four off the Swift Spears, five, six off the Goblins, and the Rail Master is swinging for four. That's 10. Michael down to four. Sure no is. creatures in play. If he only has one blocker, four attackers will seal up the game. And again, don't have to worry about match removal effects. Yeah, I don't know that Michael has any draws that save him here. See, so the damage will add up here a little bit here for via Vicencio as he'll untap his four lands and he'll take a draw here. I think it's going to be his last draw of this particular game. Yeah, you see another th Thunderbreak Regent, some lands, Colagon, none of those are going to help. Nathan Zamora is going to win game number one here over Michael via Vicencio. Tarka Red is up a game over Mardu Dragons, which means we're going to go to the sideboard. We're going to take a little look around here. Nathan with a pretty 
happy smile, and I would too. It's easy to win game one in this matchup, but things get more difficult. We take a look at the Vicentio Cyborg 2, Master of the Unseen 2, Outpost Siege, another copy of Foul Tung Invocation, a Colagon's Command. Elspeth, two Crux of Fate, two Read the Bones, one Thought Seize, and the one that's certainly going to come in, three Anger of the Gods. I mean, boy, could have Michael used an Anger of the Gods during that first game. Nathan just kept putting more creatures on the board, and you felt like Michael had no way to answer that. So yeah, Anger of the Gods, that is so important. Now, the issue is there, outside of that, Viva Sensio doesn't get many great options. Crux of Fate is very expensive as a sweeper if he chooses to go to it. Um, if he wants a late game, Master of the Unseen can gain life here, but it's awfully slow. Uh, the Angers come in, but, uh, but that may be just about it. Other side of things here for Zamora. He's got a Goblin Heel Cutter, two Goblin Rebel Masters, four Eidolon of the Great Rebel, a Destructive Revelry, two Magmatic Chasm, four Roast and a Scouring Sands. Well, I know you're the guy with the deck, so what I'll tell you what looks like I'd be wanting to do here. Uh, Rebel Master doesn't seem terrible. It was pretty good there. Heel Cutter is definitely something I want. Michael's trying to stabilize with dragons. Tell me what else is going on. Uh, those three Goblin cards I definitely want to bring in. I would consider some number of Eidolon of the Great Revel. Uh, this is not a matchup for Roast because you're not in the Siege Rhino Corsair matchup at all. Roast does have some applications in so much as Seeker of the Way and Soulfire Grandmaster are really good cards against you, so maybe you want like one or two. Uh, Scouring Sands, Magmatic Chasm, Destructive Revelry, not this particular matchup. So the three goblins for sure, maybe some number of Roasts, maybe some number of Eidolon of the Great Revel in this matchup. Now I know with the Eidolon side winning in a Tark Red, a lot of times that can be play draw dependent. Nathan is on the draw for game two, makes him less likely to go toward Eidolon. Yeah, I prefer Eidolon on the play uh, quite a bit in this particular matchup and in this deck in general as well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe only sideboards in like two Eidolons or doesn't sideboard them at all or maybe only two Roast or none of them at all but Rabble Master and Heel Cutter absolutely joining the party. Yeah so the big thing what I think in this matchup is that game one heavily favors Nathan and each person is only sideboarding three maybe five cards. I can't see it changing enough to make this a good spot for Michael. And, you know, I I'm interested to see how Nathan's going to play the games because a card like Anger of the Gods is obviously going to be good against him, but he does have the ability to recover from Anger of the Gods pretty well. You know, if he plays one, one drop, two drop, and then Villa Vicencio plays an Anger of the Gods, well, he can follow up with a Rabble Master or a Hordling Outburst and still be just fine. That's why you want to have more copies of Goblin Rabble Master after sideboard is because you need to have a really powerful follow-up to an Anger of the Gods or just present something where it forces them to actually have Anger of the Gods. Yeah, and that's why you see cards like Lightning Berserker and Zergo Bell Striker get dashed more in post board games yep. as well, just trying to play around. I mean, Drown and Sorrow it was generally the card you're playing around. Anger of the Gods, I assume, works in nearly the same way. We'll talk very quickly about Patrick Chapin and his Next Level Library that's available at StarCityGames.com slash Next Level. Two books, Next Level Magic is one, Next Level Deck Building is the other. It's for all skill levels, available in Paperbook and eBack. For Next Level Magic, it's been updated with 2015 edition examples, artwork, all that good stuff. Next Level Deck Building finally available in paperback, both of which are available now at StarCityGames.com slash Next Level. Patrick Chapin, the innovator, the Hall of Famer, the two-time world runner-up, and of course, Magic Hall of Famer. So we do have some updates for you guys as well on our other matches. Drew I. Freddy, Nathan Favelina. I. Freddy's up a game. You predicted Mono Red would yeah. win that matchup. He's up a game with Mono Red Aggro against Green Red Dragons. And then John Lim with Obzon Control is up a game over Jonathan Berg playing Green White Collected Company. Those two friends are battling it out to see who's going to go to the semifinals. Just like we drew up, these matches might happen. No, but that said, Drew I. Freddy, and you have to remember that, Drew I. Freddy and Nathan Zamora, they are the veterans in this field. And it may be a it set up for a Red Finals. Red deck's great. Thanks. I'm biased. Red deck's great. Love a good Red deck. Patrick has truly rubbed off on me. There's Just, still there's two control players in here. They, they got <laughs> that exists. <laughs> now to be fair, I don't really like the Esper Dragons against Mono Red matchup, particularly for Esper Dragons. For Obzon Control, it's it's palatable. You can you can win that one. I mean, Corsair and Siege Rhino can beat anything. Yeah, Corsair Corsair Rhino. You, you, they now all play Police Main Lions in the main. Yep. So that's, that's you have weapons. That's pretty universal now. Yep. Police Main Lion looks like it's here to stay. See what Zamora can do here in game number two. Is he's going to be on the draw? Very impressive first game. But what's always nice about a red deck is if you win game one, that means you get the cheat code for game three. <laughs> there is no die roll necessary. You just get to go first game three. Yeah, I mean, well, that depends on just how hateful of a sideboard your opponent packs. I mean, at the same time, you know, you can look across the board, across the deck list, and see something like four Nix Fleece Rams. There are ways that it, sometimes it, it doesn't matter, but Viva Sensio with nothing like that. Yeah, Anger of the Gods can't be tough to beat, though. We'll see if Eva Vicencio can find one of those or some of his other sideboard cards in this second game here. 
Some, yeah, nothing like a ration cleric in the waiting. Oh, thank God. Okay. God, what a what that draft common just. What a beating. Hey, that's what's awesome about Magic is that a 1-3 that gains 3 life is a disaster for a deck to play against. <laughs> I, I, I truly like when that's the case. I mean, it's annoying if you're playing the red deck, but I, I find it to be quite humorous. A Temple of Silence is going to start things off here for Michael. He'll take a look at his top card. Both players would keep seven cards. Jeez, another powerful, powerful hand from Nathan Zamora. Dragon Fodder, Monastery Swift Spear, Lightning Berserker, Hordling Outburst, reasonable number of lands. Foundry Tennyson is how he's going to start things off. It's got some weakness to Anger of the Gods, but it's so good. Yeah, I mean, it might be able to power through it. We'll see. Denison was a draw for the turn. It's not a bad place to start either. There's a Bloodstain Mire. Michael going to go down to 19. A Mountain or a Swamp all on the way. There's a Mountain. Remember, Michael, his early turns, even post board, he has no early game removal spells. His early game removal spells is playing two white 2-2s. Two and hoping that they can trade. He has a pair of Seekers. There is one. Some more going to untap. He'll take a draw here. Manic Influence, the draw. So if he was missing a green source before, he's got it now. We're getting Swifty. I think we're getting Slashy, too. Oh, wow. If he has the Wild Slash, he does. Mm -hmm. Clear it up. Get in the red zone. That's an attack for four. Both games had one drop into one into Swift Spear Wild Slash. Very difficult for Viva Sencio's deck. The matchups for Wild Slash is good. It's great. And this is a matchup where it's great because it's so fantastic at killing these problematic two drops in Soulfire Grandmaster and Seeker of the Way. We'll see if Zamora has another one. Well, <laughs> well, if he didn't, he does now. Might as well draw one. Yeah, I, li I like a dash here a lot. We'll see if it's a cast or dash. One thing's for sure, it's a Wild Slash. Clear that out. Get in here for five points of damage. Yep. So the dash here, this is to play around something like Anger of the Gods, in yep. addition to just pushing some damage. Absolutely. He has Viva Sensio down to 10 already. Pretty good hand left over in Dragon Fodder, Stoke the Flames, Horde Leopardus, and Lightning Berserker. And this is the kind of board that Michael actually just needs to Anger the Gods away if he has it. Yeah. Now, Thunderbreak Regent's going to try to play the role of Blocker. I see if that works out. I believe Viva Sensio's hand is a Thunderbreak Regent and two copies of Kolagon the Storm's Fury. Uh, so just trying to stabilize with large creatures. That's not going to work, though. I mean, Zamora has great plays like Hordling Outburst into Stoke the Flames. And oh, by the way, that the Foundry Denizen gets really big off that. Yep, it's going to become a four power creature. Or he can just attack like this, which I'm also fine with this play as well, which is you don't have to Stoke here. If you just want to trade Foundry Denizen with Thunderbreak Regent, that's that Stoke cool. gets to go upstairs. Yes, yeah, that's cool. And if you don't want to trade, that's cool too. And this is way, this is stronger. Yeah, You're this out. is just You're way right. better. Nice play by Nathan. You're right, the Stoke is a lot better of a card to have. And you'd rather try trade Foundry Street Denizen with the region from Stoke. Yeah. Because see, Denizen's a crappy card. Stoke's a good yep. card. So. Got to play them both. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone mocks a Denizen until it's attacking you for four. And you're, you're a rare Thunderbreak region. You're an expensive card against my 10 cent common. Don't be too proud, Michael. You can only complain so much about a Ration Cleric before you have, someone's going to point out that you're playing Foundry Street Denizen. Yeah, that's correct. Michael's given this a lot of thought, but against the red deck, you just you just have to trade resources. This is not a trade, thing where you can trade, just trade, take trade, a hit. Trade. You can't go to six. No. Because truth be told, Thunderbreak region isn't particularly good in this matchup. Yeah. If you go to six, you are dead to any burn spell plus an alpha strike. Yep. And there's the trade. Now there's a passing of the turn. Let's see what Via Vincenzo can put together this turn. Quick updates for you guys. Uh, Sam Birkenbile is up a game over Gabe Hoglar. Esper Dragons up a game over Abzan Agro. And then we've got Jew Ifredi. And Nathan, they're in game number three right now. There's a Stormbred Dragon. Which player won game three? And once again, you see Michael has his, has his four power dragons. But they continue to just have to be on block duty. They, they don't stabilize at all yeah. here. Lightning Strike is good enough to get this game over with. Stoke the Flames happened at the end of turn. Put Michael down to six. Lightning Strike was the draw for the turn. Three damage is going to come through. <sighs> three plus three is six. 14 minutes. Game over. All right. Target Red doesn't take long, my friend. Nathan Zamora going to win this match over Michael Villavicencio. Two games to zero. And Zamora moves on. Mario Dragons is done. This isn't the last you're going to hear from Michael, though, however.